Hello guys, welcome to Life Probe. My name is Wamboi Mwishoje and today we are going to be talking about responding to God's calling over our lives and I'm not going to be doing that alone. I have a friend today and so I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello everyone. It's good to be here, Faith. Uh, <laughs> my name is Catherine Mitchell. In Kenya it would be pronounced Michelle. Um, I moved to Kenya almost three years ago and have loved every minute of being here. I work at an all-girls boarding school in Tigoni called Uhuru Girls where Faith went to school and I lead discipleship there. I lead the education team there and it's a part of a larger organization called Freedom Global which is out of the U.S. and that's what brought me here. So as Christians, we are called by God to serve and that may look different for different people. And so we are going to just have a conversation, try and see ways in which God can call us and how we can respond to that call. So Catherine, you're not from Kenya. So what led you to move from the US and come here? Yeah. so. As I said, I've been here about three years, and so I moved in 2018. So I'll take you back long before 2018 to 2013. Um, I was in law school in the U.S. and was preparing for my legal career there and had for quite some time felt like the Lord was calling me to go do some sort of missions um, somewhere in the world. And a trip came available to come to Kenya with the same organization that I now work with. Mm -hmm. And so I came then, I loved it, but then the Lord kept me back in the US for a few more years. And in 2016, I returned again, just for a short-term trip. Came again in 2017. Again, this whole time I was uh, a lawyer back in the US. I was working for uh, university which I would say is my dream job as an attorney I loved every minute of it but when I came here in 2017 um, on my flight back was really when I heard the Lord speak very loudly of it's time I've continued to bring you back here just for short trips but it's time for you to uproot your life and move here mm -hmm. so in light of today's topic I would say it was definitely a call from the Lord that led me to be here Mm -hmm. And I think my next question would be like, you've received this call from the Lord and you feel like he's calling you to Kenya. What was your response? What was your reaction? Because a lot of time I'd think like if I got such a call, I'd be like, what? I have a good job. And so what was going on in your mind and in your heart at that moment? Yeah, so that was my reaction. Maybe not quite as dramatic as you said, <laughs> but I was on a I was on a, a plane uh, for 16 hours traveling by myself, and so I had a lot of time then to just be praying and saying, "God, are you sure about this?" And tears were coming, and probably everyone on the plane thought I was something was very wrong with me. But um, it didn't just end there. It wasn't like it was, okay, here's a flight and now you've made the decision. I knew that I had emotions in that moment anyways because I was leaving a place that I loved um, and I wasn't sure when I would get to come back. And so I got home. This was in Sept October of 2017 and I spent about six weeks. Mm -hmm. What I would say is wrestling with the Lord. Um, it was, I, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with big decisions like this, you're prone to just run to other people and ask what they think. But I really felt like the Lord was telling me, no, this is between you and I. And so I told one friend who could be praying with me at first, and that's because she picked me up from the airport and mm -hmm. she said on our drive back home, you're moving there and you're never coming back, are you? <laughs> and and I laughed and so I shared with her what I felt like the Lord was saying. And so, yeah, for six weeks about, I wrestled with the Lord, kind of just me and him. And then I start, started to seek 
other people's wisdom, asked other people to be praying with me through it. And as the Lord does, he sent lots of affirmation throughout. So mm -hmm. you're right, it can be a moment of what are you saying right now? God, this, there's no way my life is set. And it really was, I had I've been a part of a church plant in Charlotte. So I had a church community I loved. I had a job I loved. I had friends and roommates that I loved. My family was all near. And so everything felt right, but God said otherwise. And so again, he sent many affirmations to, to kind of stop those moments of this can't be right, God. Um, and many of those came through scripture and sermons and just words from people who are around me, um, which is why it is important at some point when you're making those decisions that you have other wise people in your life be speaking into it. Because um, mm -hmm. you can have emotions, but other people can see from the outside and, and speak words of truth. Yeah, I think it's great that you mentioned that you recognize that you needed that time to like wrestle with the Lord, mm -hmm. just the two of you. I think that's something a lot of us need to take home. Mm -hmm. And so when you finally started like opening up to your Christian community, your family, what, what was their reaction yeah. to that? Yeah, so if I can first speak back to the wrestling part, mm -hmm. and I think it's so true, especially maybe for the audience, the age of the audience who are going to be tuning in for this, mm -hmm. we often want an immediate answer. You want to pray to God on Monday, and by Tuesday you have an answer. And my faith would not have been built enough to do what I do here if it hadn't been for those six to eight weeks of just God pushing back at me. I tried to come up with every excuse possible to say no. And so God really built my faith in that. So you're exactly right. Um, some of, So often, even now that I've been through that, there are times when I just want an immediate answer. But um, yeah, God needs us to, to have our eyes to Him for a longer period than just an instant answer. So yeah, but back to your question of when I told others, mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, there were many mixed reactions. <laughs> um, so when I started to tell people in my community in Charlotte, so the people who had walked with me for a few years, some of them had been to Kenya with me, their reaction was, I'm not surprised at all, Catherine. I've just been waiting for the day you told me this. <laughs> and so again, that was affirmation of the Lord's been building this up and others around me had been seeing it. And I think I had seen it but had just wanted to say no um, and so there were those reactions um, I guess there was a camp and my dad was the leader of it <laughs> who the moment I told them my dad's first reaction was you're quitting your job and so there was a lot of people who knew I had a heart for for Kenya for missions and especially for doing what the Lord called me to but they saw all that the Lord had done in Charlotte, that he had given me this awesome job. And it really was a job that's hard to come by. And so what they were seeing is what I was giving up. And they felt like it was crazy. It was, I had been to law school. I had been to school for 21 years from what we would call kindergarten in the US up through the end of law school. I had a master's as well. And so everyone thought I was crazy to give all of that up, to come move across the world and be doing discipleship. Um, and so those were kind of the two big reactions. One side saying, oh, we've been waiting for you to tell us this. And the other saying, you're crazy. Why would you give up all that you have right now? Um, would you say that at the time that you're opening up to people about what God has spoken to you and you're getting all these reactions, would you say that you had already arrived at a decision? Yes, I would say I had already arrived. Now, we're all human uh, and so we can have a tendency to second guess. So even I can remember in some moments where I was sharing with people, they were reacting. There was definitely moments of, uh, is this the right thing? But um, especially for my parents, I just knew our relationship. I knew I was already prepared for their reaction. So that's much of the reason I took those six to eight weeks 
to really wrestle with the Lord and make sure I was doing what the Lord was calling me to and not letting other things influence me, even good things in my life. Um, and so I knew what my dad's reaction was going to be. And so if I had not been already decided, if I had not been set in, in what I felt like the Lord was calling me to, there may have been much more influence and much more difficulty in sharing with them. Having said that, um, as we were talking before, it's important that I say, especially for those who are a bit younger than me, more in your age bracket, Faith, that I was 31. Yeah, 31 when I was making this decision. And so I had been out of the house. I had my own life. I was an adult fully on my own. Um, whereas for the youth, for some of you in university or college or just out of high school or whatever your age is, your parents are still very influential in your life and you're not quite at a point perhaps that you're on your own. So honor your father and mother is a, one of the Ten Commandments and it's of course still even important for me, but um, for you all as you're listening to the Lord, the Lord's never going to call you to be disobedient um, to one thing he's called you to in order to be obedient to another. And mm -hmm. so you just have to find that balance of especially in this uh, strange season of life where you're figuring out who you are, of who needs to be the people speaking into your life and who you need to decide for yourself and then go share with them. Yeah, so. I think that's very important to mm -hmm. note. And on that note, guys, we're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how God prepares you for what you've said yes to. Guys, welcome back. Um, we are talking about how God prepares us for what He has called us to and what we have said yes to. And so, Catherine, during that period when you said yes, um, how did you feel God preparing you to for what you're coming to do in Kenya and how did you even get ready for it yourself? Yeah, so for me personally, I had from the time I made the decision until I actually made the move to Kenya, I had about eight months um, because I, I really made the decision in December of 2017 and moved in July of 2018. So that's just to give you all a time frame on what we're looking at. But I think a few things happened during that period. Um, and this isn't the case for everyone, but for me, I was moving across the world and I was leaving behind my family, my friends. Um, and I don't say that as like, oh, pity me, like it's been the best, um, absolutely the best. But I think it is important to know that when God calls you to something, it often requires sacrifices. And so he prepared me by giving me really sweet time with my family and my friends and my old job, my co-workers there, I had to let them know I was leaving. And so he, he really gave me some good time that all of them poured into me. Um, it was like the Lord knew how much I was going to be pouring out in these years I was here. And so he poured into me for those few months. Um, I think knowing what I was coming to do, I had said yes and I was ready, but at the same time, I feared a lot because I was coming to work with high school girls. I was a lawyer <laughs> and so I've never had teaching background, any sort of education background, nor had I been to seminary or been any sort of pastor or even worked at a church. Um, and so, you know, I had to keep digging in and letting the Lord remind me that he equips the call. He doesn't call the equipped. And so he didn't need me to be at any certain point in being ready, we can say, or being having all the knowledge in order for me to come here and do discipleship. He, throughout that time, was preparing me. And I think the greatest way he prepared me was not to give me, you know, 10 books to read or to memorize, uh, you know, all sorts of discipleship models or anything. It was simply to build my faith during that. And so mm -hmm. 
I'm convinced that the things that we are most called to are the things that we need to depend on him most in. Mm -hmm. um, and so anything that I can do on my own, I often have to second guess of, is this really something the Lord's called me to? Because it's all in, in my doings. You know, in Ephesians, uh, it talks about how he predestines us in chapter one. And in chapter two, it talks about how he set out works for us. Um, and so knowing that, if it's something that I set out to do and can do it on my own, then perhaps it's not aligning with that. And so he really had to build my faith during that season to, yeah, um, as I was sharing with you before, I had to give up all my stuff even. Like I came here with a couple of suitcases and just had to trust that the Lord was gonna provide for even like the, the place I was gonna stay and the people I was going to be friends with and those sorts of things. And so it was just a faith building process throughout of um, God's got me and he called me to this. He's gonna see me through it. And yeah, without that faith building, I think here I would have in doing what he's called me to do, I probably would have failed. <laughs> but yeah. learning to depend on him has taught me to depend on him every day in being here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Speaking of setting out good works for us, mm -hmm. the fact that you are a lawyer and you're practicing, did, did it occur to you that maybe I'm not being called to go to Kenya? <laughs> what if being a lawyer is my calling? Yeah, so definitely it occurred to me many times um, because even the process of me becoming a lawyer was one that the Lord set forth. I'm sure of that. Um, because I, when I went to university, I set out to be a physical therapist and the Lord shut many doors, mainly by showing me what I am interested in. <laughs> Even though I thought I was interested in medicine, I realized as soon as I got to university, which university in the U.S. works a little bit differently where you can change courses more easily. And I took one course on the U.S. Supreme Court and from that moment, I knew what I wanted to study. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know necessarily I wanted to be a lawyer, but um, one thing led to another. And by the end of my university time, I was applying for law school. Mm -hmm. Many other things happened that we could get into about how I ended up at the law school I ended up, how I ended up in the job that I ended up in. And all of those were the Lord, like mm -hmm. putting pieces together. And I think one of the things that he kept drawing me to when I would say, are you sure God, like you've, you've put all these things in place for me to be here in Charlotte, North Carolina, being a lawyer, doing the dream job that I've always wanted. Are you sure you want to call me away? And it was him saying, you wouldn't be called to Kenya if you weren't in this place, because I almost moved across the country to do a totally different job, which would have meant I wouldn't have been on trips to Kenya. And so, also, um, the, the lawyer work that I did, as I said, was at a university. And I told you I have no education background. But what I got to do there, um, I got to really help to set up processes and procedures to protect students from sexual assault violence. Here, we talk to our students all the time about that. Um, I got to work on student affairs issues outside of that, of just um, helping students to find their voice and so forth. And here, that's what I'm doing. And so I think the, one of the really cool things is people look at me and say, you are a lawyer. How did you ever end up doing this? And the Lord used so much of me being a lawyer to bring me to this space. Um, you know, my bosses even were strong believers. And you don't find that often um, in legal careers, honestly. And they were super supportive and continue to reach out and support me here. And so just all those small things, even though I'm not practicing law at all here, um, just my career path there just prepared me so much for what is happening on this side of the world that, yeah, God just continued to, to say, you see, yeah. I'm weaving it all together. And I think that's how he works is he doesn't just set out one specific work. And if you miss it too bad, mm -hmm. he weaves all things together for good. Yeah, so. I think it's beautiful how the Lord shows us little bits of the bigger mm -hmm. picture at different yeah. points in our lives. And yeah. we're like, 
Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, and now you're here. You're here. So how has it been? How are you feeling about this? It's been three years. So technically, mm. you're Kenyan. <laughs> I even hear you have a Kenyan name. So tell I, us. I do. Um, thanks to many people, but especially Faith and her mother. I'm in Jerry. I'm very Kikuyu. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it has been absolutely incredible um, being here it has been very hard at times and not hard because um, it's not what God has me doing but because the enemy is real and he wants to fight against us mm -hmm. and it has been very rewarding and also very challenging um, you know being being here on short-term trips you get to see the fun part, you get to do the fun things and meet people. But then when you move your life here, um, at first it's still that same way. But then you begin to see, um, you know, that as much as you are immersing yourself in the culture, mm -hmm. your, your home feels like it's in two places, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. So I still love my home in the U.S. I love my family there. I long to be with them. But then when I go to visit them, I long to be here. <laughs> Even if I'm gone for two weeks, I miss everyone here. And so it's a very strange uh, dilemma to be in, but one that I continue to thank God for because mm -hmm. it just means I have places, people in two places on opposite sides of the world who I get to love and they love me back. And so, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I think it's good that you mentioned yeah. it's not all smooth yeah. so that we're not like she moved to Kenya and she lived happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, it's important to know that even as God calls us and prepares us for good works, he yeah. doesn't like promise us it's going to be smooth. No. But then he is faithful to mm. take us through that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I think um for instance the the work that I do we at our school that I work at we have scholarship students we have paying students and then we have a lot of donations coming from the US to help support it and financially it's a struggle for us just as it is for you know we have lots of Kenyans on our staff and so it's not just like God puts us here and he prov like provides immediately as I said it's the same just as I had to pray for six to eight weeks of wrestling with him and that was a really important time. It's the same here when we're doing the works of, it's not a, as I said earlier, you ask on Monday and mm -hmm. it comes on Tuesday. Like it continues to be a challenge, but as I said, his, the way he builds our faith and that's what God's most after. He's not most after the destination that we get to of, okay, you've established a school that is running well and you've, you know, seen this many girls graduate that's not what he's after he's after each of our hearts and mm -hmm. after us becoming more like him and so even if it hadn't worked out at all even if i moved here for two years and which was my initial commitment and then i said you know what this isn't this isn't working out and god called me back home it still would have been worth it because in the process he made me more like him mm -hmm. and yeah i think that's really important to take away that when we're talking about our callings often many of us think that it's it's like okay like god's called me to be this and these are the steps to it mm -hmm. what god's called us to be is to be more like jesus mm -hmm. um, and and there's a lot of things that need to happen in that process and it's not just if you do a b and c that's it um mm -hmm. you know and so yeah so Catherine. What would you say to someone who is watching us today and they're feeling like God is calling them to something? Yeah, well, there's probably many things I could say, but two, two things come to mind. One is the story of Esther, which was very significant. Like that's, it's hanging in my house even today um, because the Lord used it so much and it's the the verse where it says perhaps you were called here for such a time as this and we can often look around at others and be like either comparing of oh they're doing things and i'm not 
or saying, oh, they can take care of that. Um, I don't need to. God's called other people. And it says very clearly, perhaps you were called here for such a time as this. And so don't let fear, don't let doubt, don't let all of those things get in the way of you just simply saying yes to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, say yes to the Lord. Um, back, back home, one of the the phrases that is often used at my church is um, put your yes on the table and let let the Lord put it on the map. And so what that really gets to is you just surrender. Come with open hands and say yes to the Lord. Um, whatever it is you're calling to me, calling me to at this time, I say yes to you. And then let the Lord lead um, as to where that is or what that is or who that is. Um, so that would be number one. And number two would be don't, don't hear my story of, oh, she moved across the world um, and think everyone has some big dramatic uh, event like that in their life. Maybe for you it is. You know, it's not just me coming to Kenya as a missionary. The Lord's calling missionaries from Kenya to move all over the world. So maybe at some point in your life it is one of those huge steps to go to Somalia and share the gospel or to go to China and be a business missionary. Um, but the Lord loves small steps of obedience. And so it doesn't have to be you go from, I have no idea what I'm doing to I'm moving across the world. It can simply be saying yes tomorrow of yes, I'm going to be faithful in reading the word today or the next day, yes, God has called me to go to work this morning and to be kind to my workmate. Um, it can, you know, God's calling and his purpose for us, as I said earlier, the greatest one is to be more like Jesus. And we can do that in small steps of obedience. That's um, so important to hear because we can get caught up in these big stories. Um, but God sees the small steps just as much as he does the big steps. Thank you, Catherine, for You're joining welcome. us on Life Probe yeah. today. Um, guys, we recognize that this is a big topic and we have not covered many things. But we hope that through this video you can keep the conversation going, talk to the Lord about what He's calling you to do, and definitely tell us what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Bye.